Hello and welcome back to Emotion Ocean Talks. I'm Gabriele Kerber and today I want to talk about one of the big keywords that's often used in the current discussion on climate change. And that keyword is ocean acidification. You probably heard about it, right? But do you know what ocean acidification actually is, how it happens and why it is so threatening? It all actually boils down to carbon dioxide. Due to burning fossil fuels, coal and oil predominantly, humans release huge amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And as it is a very soluble gas, soluble in water, a lot, actually about one third of the atmospheric carbon dioxide will be dissolved in the water masses of the earth in the oceans. But why do the oceans become acidic due to the solving of the carbon dioxide. Let's have a look at the chemistry of it before we talk about the consequences of acidification. Carbon dioxide plus water forms a weak acid which is called carbonic acid. Carbonic acid in water is not stable. It will dissociate. Into one proton. And one bicarbonate ion. This also is depending on the conditions. Not stable but will further dissociate. will further dissociate, releasing another proton and a carbonate ion. But with chemical reactions, we usually don't have one-way roads. It's not one thing becomes another becomes another and that's it. But we have an equilibrium and depending on the conditions, the balance in such an equation will move more to the left or to the right. In case of this specific equation, it's actually about the acidity of the conditions. So in a more alkaline condition, the balance will be toward the right side, toward the carbonate. In a more acidic situation, it will be toward the bicarbonate, toward the left side of the equation. Naturally, seawater is slightly alkaline with a pH of about 8.2. So that means that naturally the conditions are that we have more of the double um, dissociation that we usually have more carbonate. Carbonate with calcium of which we have high concentrations and rather stable level in the oceans will precipitate to calcium carbonate and thus the carbonate will be taken out of the equation. By taking it out of the equation, we give room for more di um, carbon dioxide to enter in the equation and to move again through the solving and dissociation towards the carbonate. But remember, each carbon dioxide molecule that enters into the equation will leave two protons and protons mean that the whole story, the whole soup becomes more acidic. So if we have m really huge amounts of atmospheric CO2, as we happen to have right now, more CO2 comes into the equation driving the force towards production of more and more protons and carbonate. The carbonate will be taken out protons are left, the soup becomes more and more acidic. Until at some point we don't get the, so much carbonate anymore, but we only get stuck with the bicarbonate, which cannot precipitate out of the water. So the ocean's functionality as a carbon dioxide sink will stop to function in that way. And not only that, but also the more acidic the oceans become, the lower the carbon, uh, the 
carbonate concentration is, so we don't precipitate anymore, but at some point it actually turns around. Instead of taking carbon dioxide out of it through the calcium carbonate precipitation, we start dissolving already precipitated calcium carbonate and get it back into the equation. And that is the point where we are. That is one of our problems. Because already slight changes in the pH level, which is a logarithmic scale, so tiny numbers actually can mean huge realities, um, already tiny changes can turn from precipitation to corrosion of calcium carbonate. And that's what we have. In the last 200 years, the carbon dioxide concentration in the air increased from 280 parts per million to approximately 390 parts per million. And by that, by all the carbon dioxide that was taken up by the oceans that already went through this equation and left the protons, the oceans became more acidic. From 200 years ago, we had a pH value of 8.25 and nowadays it's about 8.14. So a little bit more than 0.1 pH units decrease could already be observed. Now that sounds like nothing, but 0.1 pH units here mean actually that the acidity of the oceans increased by 30%. And according to the current models that we have, with the amount of CO2 that was already released into the atmosphere and which will be re released over the next years and decades, we will have a further decline of the pH by 0.3 to 0.4 units. So, huge increase in acidity. It is not like massive release of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and thus acidification of the oceans would happen the first time now. It happened at least twice before, once about 56 million years back, during the Paleocene eocene thermal maximum. That was a time when, probably due to increased volcanic activity, huge amounts of greenhouse gases were released into the atmosphere, among it huge amounts of CO2. And thus the Earth's atmosphere heated up by 5 to 6 degrees Celsius. And accordingly the oceans became more acidic. The acidica acidification of the oceans 56 million years ago led to a dissolving of basically all the calcium carbonate deposits on the seafloor. So there is no calcium carbonate left from that time. The bad thing about it is that the CO2 increase in the atmosphere 56 million years ago was just about 10% of what we have nowadays. So we can perhaps imagine what will happen to our oceans. Now who cares about the calcium carbonate? Why is it so bad if it dissolves? It is bad because basically everything you see here is made of calcium carbonate or depends on it. Calcium carbonate is what corals precipitate in order to build the reefs. And there are so many organisms depending on coral reefs. And all of them will suffer and many disappear. But not only corals precipitate calcium carbonate, also clams, oysters and all the other bivalves. That's what their shell is made of. The same applies to the different kinds of snails. Also their houses are made of calcium carbonate. Some other scientific studies showed that also the reproduction of many marine organisms will suffer in more acidic conditions either due to reduced sperm mobility, reduced fertilization success, or problems with the development and growth of larval states. 
Some scientific experiments also indicated that behavioral changes can be expected with several types of animals due to the increased acidity of the oceans. Like, for example, some reef fish seem to get dumped with the more acidic water surrounding them. They can't learn anymore who their enemies are. So instead of fleeing or hiding from a predator, they just sit there and will be snacked up. So for those reef fish, not only will their habitats disappear, they will have to deal with reduced reproduction, but also their chances of survival will be slimming down. That's not a good outlook for the oceans. And why does it concern us? Because more than one billion of our own kind, more than one billion people live from oceans. So ocean acidification is actually a quite scary topic. And it was only realized in the past few years what's happening there. And therefore the whole discussion on climate change moved so much from looking at individual species or flooding of coastal regions and so on toward the topic of ocean acidification. And I hope that with this Emotion Ocean Talk, you got a little bit of grip on this topic and why it is so important. And I also hope that you will come back and watch other episodes when I'm actually going to talk more about um, things that have to do with acidification or tell more about marine organisms which might somehow have to do or suffer or be affected by all this acidification. So yeah, I hope you'll tune in again when there's another episode of Emotion Ocean Talks and, well, despite everything, I'm wishing you a great day.